Well, guys, we are back for another episode of the Liberal Asshole Show, Ooh. episode 43. And today's topics, there's only six of them, but one of them has two different views we're going to have to watch. We're going to look forward to that. So what are today's topics? Russo-Ukraine war update, Joe Rogan's LGBT double-edged sword, Clarence Thomas' scandal, Will Smith assaulting Chris Rock. Uh... Pretty sure it's not with someone Chris. else and not Chris Rock leaving Fox News. And Road Card 2024? Chris Wallace. I don't know why Discord did that. <laughs> but that's weird. But anyways, we have time to update, of course, until this ends. Update on the Russo-Ukraine war, as you see the map right there. There have been more offensives as um, Ukraine's pushed Russia back some more areas. As I now go get the um, Wikipedia's link up of... um casualties so last week last week russia says they've lost 1300 and like almost 4000 wounded and according to nato they said 30 to 40000 have been ca 40, 30 to 40000 casualties america says up to 10000 plus soldiers killed and of course there's that one leak remember i told you it was like maybe between 10 to 20000 officially that russia will not acknowledge because it makes them look bad Meanwhile, Ukraine, man, man, this has been almost a month ago still, 1,300 dead. America says between 2,000 to 4,000 is dead. And, of course, let's see, casualties, according to March 31st, according to Ukraine, up to almost 6,700. UN, UN says only 1,200 have been killed. Another 2,000 were wounded. And, of course, the UN says between 4 million to 6.5 million refugees, and that's as of March 21st, so that's I think we covered that in the last one. And, of course, yep. there have been t peace talks going on in um, Turkey, if you haven't heard about that lately. That? So, hope it makes some progress on that. And did you hear what happened yesterday? Uh, what thing? Apparently, no idea how, if how true this is, but supposedly... Ukraine might have actually attacked a Russian um, oil... Ref um, oil... Um, supply area just a few miles into Russia last yesterday. Oh, with ouch. Yeah, and they destroyed like oh. almost the entire thing. Oh, jeez. So, um, it was like 300 million barrels of like oil and stuff like gone just like that. Far out. Now, of course, Ukraine is denying it and there's no, there's no like, comp there's no like idea who exactly did it. Plus, Ukraine has done missile attacks in the areas recently. Hell, this area, Belgorod or whatever it is, like a few days earlier, they actually um, did a missile strike on an um, ammunition compound, if you didn't know about that. Yeah, I heard about that. So, who knows what's going to happen about that. So, And, of course, shit, what was I going to say? So, what do you think about the war so far? Do you think Ukraine will be oh, able to... I mean, it's good that Ukraine's starting to push back on Russia at last. Okay. Especially um, the missile attack, even if it's true or false, no matter what, it's not good. Um, well, it wasn't a missile, it was helicopters just yesterday. Okay. But, um, of course, if you didn't hear, it's been talking about the last few days that Russia was pulling back a lot of troops from um, Kiev and like eastern Ukraine, but America and NATO think they're actually repositioned to maybe try and do something in Donbass. And they actually withdraw troops from um, Chern the Chernobyl um, z um, exclusive zone. Oh, yeah, that's zone. Uh, a lot of people, there, a lot of their soldiers were getting sick. Yeah, that's with, why you um, radiation poisoning. That's why you shouldn't invade a radioactive zone, you idiots. <laughs> yep. They dug in and submerged themselves in the radioactive soil and got sick. So, no idea yet on any sort of peace deal yet. But in the end, I'm still not fully convinced Ukraine is going to get out of this scot-free. What about you? Um, I mean, um, Zelensky did say um, we'll keep neutral with NATO and Russia. Um, and um, I've heard possibly that he might be willing to give up Crimea. Although... So although this... about Although at the same time, that's pretty much been the status quo for like the last few years, so it's making like this war even more pointless in that regard. But hey, that's what happens when you're an idiot like Putin. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yep. And of course, supposedly, I don't think we cover this, but 
Supposedly, there's actually been mutinies in the Russian army, if you didn't hear about that. And no, there's, and also, supposedly, according to um, American military officials at the Pentagon, they think um, Russia's both military and Putin's advisors are, are lying to him and not telling him what's actually going on because they're afraid what's going to happen to them. <laughs> yeah, I heard about that. So you got to see about that, too, then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yes, we're gonna have some trouble um, between those gen the missing generals over the next few days, few yeah. weeks, and also probably a couple coming out poisoned yeah. as well. Oh, there actually that actually happened recently at some um some um negotiations. A couple of Ukrainians and a Russian um diplomat actually got poisoned somehow. Oh. Hmm, very suspicious and curious why. Because that's not really good if you're doing negotiation to do that. Yeah. All right, so we can only just hope that Ukraine and Russia end this war as quickly as possible and get all this scot-free. All right, so I think that's all there needs to be talked about on this one right now. All right, so then what do you want to talk about next? Uh, we can do the double-edged sword of Joe Rogan and LGBT ah! stuff. All right, then. So, of course, we've covered Joe we're going to show before. You can't really take what he says, though, at face value because, one, he's an idiot. But, two, he always changes his views on stuff that depend on who he talks to. If he talks to a progressive, he becomes a progressive. If he talks to a right-wing dipshit, he becomes a right-wing dipshit. And I just noticed this. And I noticed this, too, with a couple people, like I even mentioned before with, like, Bill Maher when we talked about him. Because this... Because there's actually a video that, um... Rogan did it. It's really, really bad that Mike covered about the don't say gay bill in Florida, which unfortunately passed the other day, and of course it's really, really bad. Hell, even the majority of Florida was against it from what I found out. Mm. So, of course, that's what happens when you have a shitty government that passes laws that you don't even like. So, we wanted to watch that because it's really, really bad. He, he does all the old anti-gay tropes, and he supports the don't say gay bill, but then... Then, like a day later, Kyle posts a video of him actually destroying, without even really trying, a homophobic comedian. So, mm. so, get what I'm saying in that regard? So first, let's watch the bad video of Rogan, because, oh my god, this was bad. And I mean bad. A lot of people have been wondering what's going on with Joe Rogan. It seems like COVID broke his brain, but I promise you, he's been a buffoon for a very long time. Here's what I think is happening with Joe Rogan. I think that when Rush Limbaugh died, his demonic spirit possessed Joe Rogan, and it turned him into a full-blown conservative reactionary. Not just, you know, conspiratorial and conservative around the edges, like full-blown. And now he's social conservative as well. So take a look at what Joe Rogan says when discussing the... Mike, that's going to be a little weird that you would call him a social conservative when you see the other video later on. Just like the same thing I said before about Bill. Don't say gay, Bill. Keep in mind, this is a very dumb dis uh, and misinformed take, but that's to be expected for Joe Rogan because... No surprise! Google search and actually learn what the bill is about. But let's, uh, let's go ahead and listen to what he has to say here. Right. I had a conversation with someone the other day, and she was like... I would be down with Republicans if they would just drop all the gay shit. She was like, yes. I'm just, all that gay stuff, like, leave those fucking gay people alone. Like, this is, it's one of the, the, the dumbest it's, aspects yeah. of hardcore conservatives. Yeah, that they, absolutely. That, I love how the assumption is that Republicans are only bad because they're homophobic. They also don't care that thousands of people are dying every single year because they lack access to basic health care. They also don't care about housing, food insecurity. They are very hawkish when it comes to foreign policy. Uh, I mean, to be fair, Democrats are too. But overall, you can check every single box of what makes a terrible person, and that's the Republican Party. I mean, have you watched any of the confirmation hearings for Kentonji Brown-Jackson? They're screaming about how maybe she's sympathetic to pedophiles. They're screaming about critical race theory. These are insane people. A lot of them are just full-on anti-democracy at this point. So, uh, yeah, they're homophobic and that's bad, and I'm glad that whoever he had a conversation with acknowledges that. But that's not the only reason why Republicans are bad. And to be clear, I'm no fan of Democrats, but Republicans are off the spectrum when it comes to political ideology. They're just authoritarian at this point. They, 
Eight. Although there is the one problem, though, Mike. The homophobia well, is what gets people to not like the Republicans. Unfortunately, the other stuff just doesn't land. Yeah. Deny gay rights. And uh, I, I go, I think you're probably not alone. I think there's probably a lot of people that feel that way. There's, there's a lot of people that are in the center on whether it's from left-wing issues or right-wing issues. You know, with left-wing issues, maybe it's uh, trans women in sports or maybe it's, uh, you know, uh, gender confirmation. It's like this don't say gay thing in Florida. When I heard that, I was like, what? <laughs> what are they saying? You can't say gay? Is that really what's going on? Oh, is that it turns that's, out that's, that's that not. Thing. And that is what it was. What, what it is. Yeah. Oh, that's not what it is. What it is. Oh, really? Will you enlighten us then? Because I would love to know what it is. Because if you aren't allowed to say gay in the classroom, even if it is grades K through third grade, um, then what is it? What's the parameters of this? Now, if you look at the legislation, they left it purposefully vague. Because really, this is about intimidating teachers, I think, anyways. If you're, you know, a female teacher and you happen to reference your wife, if you're a kid with uh, two mommies and your teacher references that, that all is potentially illegal under this legislation. So it quite literally is a don't say gay bill, but apparently Joe Rogan knows more and he's going to explain what specifically it means. This is ages... It's first through third grade. They're saying you're not supposed to talk about sexual orientation, gender orientation, or sexual proclivity. Or and, now, do they do they do this in schools? When I was in kindergarten, I don't really remember them talking about homosexuality. I don't ever remember being taught the fundamentals of gay sex when I was seven years old. Uh, so. This isn't actually an issue. It's creating a solution for a problem that doesn't exist specifically to make kids with gay parents feel, you know, otherized. Kids can know that gay people exist, and that doesn't necessarily mean that you're teaching them about homosexuality. That's, that's absurd to think that, but that's what this bill does. And unfortunately, a good chunk of Americans actually think that. Especially when, yeah. especially when it's that young, they really do think, even though they agree with gay rights, they really, you know how parents are in this country, they freak the fuck out when it comes to sex. Violence, though, that's a-okay, but sex, yeah. oh, God forbid, oh, no. Yeah. Even, students rock on. Even though there's, that's what I think. even though there's no reference to sex whatsoever, and same goes for me, when I was in school, and I was up to third grade, never... Learned about sex whatsoever of anything, even heterosexuality. Didn't, I didn't you learn know, about what you sex education until fifth year. Yeah. They said you should just teach well, math and science and, and history. Now we're going to go there and move down to fifth year due to a lot of people, a lot of kids hitting puberty earlier. To little kids. Yeah. And just, are you sure that they're okay with teaching history, Joe? But that's what's happening. This is just simply you have to pretend as if gay people don't exist to an absurd extent. So if Timmy has two dads, you can't bring that up. Otherwise, you could be penalized if you're a teacher. Isn't that absurd? Isn't this censorship? Wasn't Joe Rogan just screeching about censorship? But yet it's okay to censor people if it's something that we disagree with. Right wing on. The toddlers be toddlers, yeah. and then, then they can you can then you can start ramping up your your instruction. You know, and and see. That right there is this insinuation that, you know, um, you teach kids to be gay. If you just expose them to homosexuality, when you when you start to ramp up the indoctrination, then that's when you could get them to be gay. Rope Except number one, way. you can't I mean, you choose to be gay. Life, <laughs> I didn't know that homosexuality was a thing. My parents are both heterosexual. Every single one of my siblings were heterosexual. Uh, I did not know that gay was a thing but yet somehow i still turned out gay it's almost like you can't teach someone to be a certain way and anyone who suggests that is a fucking moron uh for example i don't think that joe rogan chose to be straight or that guy who just chimed in and suggested that you can teach kids to be gay i don't think he chose to be straight if so then choose a different sexual orientation choose to like men go suck a dick and enjoy it try that you can't do that you wouldn't like it because you don't choose your sexual orientation. So it's just completely idiotic. And they're bringing back this old trope about how gay people supposedly choose to be gay. No, you just are. If I could have chosen my sexual orientation, I promise you, growing up evangelical, I would not have chosen to be gay. So this is just ignorant and stupid, and I feel like they've never spoken to a gay person ever. 
start ramping up your, your <laughs> instruction. You know, and, instruction. And, and, <laughs> Let's indoctrinate these kids. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, you absolute moron. People are opposed to that. But it's like, listen, your your teachers are not supposed to be the people that explain gender to a fucking seven-year-old. And they're not doing that. I mean, if you do like a brief summary, like, oh, there are men that like men, there are women that like women, and that's okay. But according to social conservatives, it's not, though. Oh, God forbid. Of course not. Of course not. They can't, don't learn anything about, shouldn't learn anything about sex. That way, yeah. they can, that way they can abuse them and keep them trapped while abusing them. And learn how to beat women, remember? Yeah, and beat up women as well, yeah. They're not doing that. That's not what's going on. How many anecdotes even exist where this is the case? Where you have a kindergarten teacher who brings these kids into the classroom and she says, okay, now kids, let's talk about gender identity. You know, there are some people who identify as male, female. We have non-binary uh, gender identities. Nobody does that. Nobody does that. And nobody... There is, Mike. Like, that straw man actually does exist, but of course the right take it to the opposite extreme too. He is advocating for teaching sex ed ages K through third grade. That's madness. It is, but there are idiots online and Twitter that have said that. And then of course yeah. and of course those idiots fuel the idiots on the right to pass these terrible laws. You made that up. It's not actually an issue. You just want to make it so that way uh, you pretend as if Gay people don't exist, and some kids don't have two mommies or two daddies. Yeah, it's just the, and who are these teachers, and how do you do you know what their perspective is? Are they now? This is already bad, but it's going to get worse. Believe it or not. Yes, it's going to get very about bad. It? Are they trying to indoctrinate the child to any particular point of view, whether it's pro? Yes, yeah. Joe. They're trying yeah, to teach we... children about butt sex. That's, is that, that's is not that even the worst part. They're, they're trying to teach all right. kids. They just, all right, then they, this is a straight people with indoctrinating kids into heterosexuality, then Joe Rogan. But see, yeah. but see, I literally, I think I've seen one one time fairly recently, Joe Rogan in. Two days go from progressive to Nazi and then swing back to like center left. What do you expect? It depends on this in the person he's talking to, remember? <laughs> yep. And you think that was bad? Oh, it's going to get worse than that. Oh, boy. Mike was not wrong when he was making that warning. It just, wait. There we go. Right. That's what. Maybe that's yeah, why maybe. so many gay people, folks, in case you don't know, are trying to teach kids to be gay, so that way there's more people to date. Try to widen that pool, so you have a bigger opportunity to land someone that you want to marry, maybe one day. That's what it is. I mean, what are you talking about, Joe? You sound like a fucking moron right now because you are. But I mean, this is this is just straight up conservatism like this isn't even oh well i'm a populist conservative or i'm i'm kind of anti-establishment you're just a social conservative now you're a trad con joe how pathetic you're just rush limbaugh now uh mike no my rush was against gay rights from the very start you're gonna see in a video coming up rogan is still for gay rights it's just on this issue he's brain dead anti-transgender or anti-gay or pro-gay they shouldn't have any say at all when you're talking to uh, a seven-year-old kid, I mean, I so don't teach kids about different sexualities. Okay, that's really dumb, especially when it's so bland and generic, as Vlog just said earlier. I feel like yeah. that is the job of the parents. Yeah. That. But what if they're homophobic pieces of shit that don't want to ever talk, explain the shit to them? They have to learn about oh, it in some way. What if they don't want to explain anything sexual? So that they can abuse their kids. Yes, that's the job. I mean, and you hope the parents are doing right. it. But um, you when know, kids yeah. get older and they, you know, they develop feelings for either the same sex or opposite sex, or they feel like they're in the wrong. But the, the, yeah. then these conversations should be had by qualified people that can discuss this from a nuanced perspective and understand what the psychology of a young person who's trying to figure out who they are in the world is. But the idea that this is a don't say gay right. because you're 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 it saying is. that ages uh, you know first grade to third grade that you shouldn't okay. be bringing up these yeah. subjects and yeah. in this particular thing you're indoctrinating kids into being gay 
I, mean, I think a lot of people are saying, no, I just don't want you grooming my kids for Whoa. whatever your ideology is. Whoa. 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 Grooming. Oh, my. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Joe. <laughs> you, know, like, you sounded like you want to. Hey, Joe, you're enabling child abuse for this. Teaching kids about homosexuality is grooming them. Oh boy, a good old anti-gay trope. I haven't heard that one in quite a while. All the anti-gay tropes have been popping up lately the last few months. It's fun to destroy them once again. Oh my god, that was cringe. <laughs> well, so if you say gay, if you let kids it's know that gay people exist pedophile. casually by talking about your two uncles or your two mommies, you're grooming kids into an ideology because being gay is an ideology, right? The gay agenda is back! So the reason why he's saying this is because Joe Rogan is just a Fox News grandpa at this point. Laura Ingram said grooming and she used the words grooming. And now he's just regurgitating what he hears on Fox News because I'm assuming he watches it every fucking night. But this is such... A oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, you're getting, okay, you're really going a bit far there, dude. Yeah. Because you're bringing back that old gays are pedophile trope and they want to groom children into the gay lifestyle so they can be in relationships with them. Like, that's what he's doing, so it's bigoted to say that. But also, think of how stupid this view is. I mean, Sexual it is Rogan, what do you expect? It's just about <laughs> sex, and so... To him, it, it's inextricably linked, right? So sex and orientation, you can't disconnect them, according to Joe Rogan. If you tell a kid that someone is gay, or if a kid knows that somebody is gay, that means automatically that that person just likes to fuck. That's, that's, it's all about fucking, right? Marriage is it's just you know a, a transactional thing. For Joe Rogan, you know, for his wife, that's just the person who he fucks. That's all it is, right? Learning that he is straight means I know his sexual preference. There's nothing else to homosexuality or heterosexuality. When Joe Rogan goes to dinner parties, he introduces his wife as his cum dumpster. Hi, everyone. This is my meat wallet, Rebecca. Just stand in the corner until we're ready for sex. Do you really think that's all that's... You don't fight bigotry fight bigot with bigotry. It is, Joe. Don't oh. think that there's more to your sexual identity and your sexual preference? Isn't it also about companionship and love and friendship? Uh, isn't it about more than that? Or is it just about sex? See, he's overly sexualizing gay people because gay people, they're inherently uh, promiscuous. It's just about Another sex. Another anti-gay trope! That gay people exist. Yeah. Um, oh, if you tell a kid drug. that Timmy has two mommies, then it's, oh, see, they're having gay sex. That's what you think about. That <laughs> is your brain on uh, traditional conservatism. That's what this is about. He he thinks that gay people are basically um, trying to groom children. He just said it. This is Joe Rogan being explicitly homophobic, saying that to let kids know that gay people exist, it's grooming. Okay, so if I buy a present for my niece or my nephew, and I put from your uncles on the gift tag, uncles meaning two men who are married, does that mean that I'm grooming them and I'm trying to get them to be gay as well? Or am I just simply to acknowledging that this is my you are, Mike. Will purchase this gift for you? Here you go, happy <laughs> birthday. Like, this logic here is, is moronic. It's buffoonish. But Joe Rogan is a buffoon. Joe Rogan is an imbecile, and he just parrots whatever he hears. So the conservatives currently are on this anti-gay trip and anti-trans trip, and on Fox News, he hears them saying, uh, you know, this is about grooming. And so he just regurgitate that. Why would I watch Joe Rogan when I can just watch Fox News? It's the same fucking thing at this point, right? Laura Ingram. Just wait till you see the next video, Mike. <laughs> says grooming. Joe Rogan says grooming. Might as well just watch fucking Fox News. He talks about anti-vax bullshit. They talk about anti-vax bullshit. Just watch it straight from the source. Just watch Fox News because that's what Joe Rogan is at this point. Yeah, slowly turning into Alex Jones and they're friends as well. Now, I do want to share this video from uh, uh, No, 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 Rogan, uh, Rogan's cut Jones out. I remember that um, Rogan basically cut Joe Rogan out a few, um, it was a couple of years ago, I think, where Rogan actually mostly cut Alex Jones out of his life. That is cool. Uh, so this individual here... Anna V. Escamani. She is a representative in Florida. 
she responds to what Rogan says here, where he claims that this is about grooming children because gays are pedophiles. Um, and here's what she says about that. From George, I'm hearing it too. Joe Rogan said because he's got mm. major influence. Yeah. Uh, 11 million podcast listeners. Uh, I don't know if he read the bill. I doubt it. But he said he uh, did it's first through third grade, and they're saying your te- no, your teacher is not supposed to be talking about sexual orientation, gender orientation, or sexual proclivity, or what you're interested in. They they said you should just teach math and science and history to little kids. Your teachers are not supposed to be the people who explain gender to a fucking seven-year-old. Who are these teachers? And do you know what their perspective is? Are they intelligent about it? Are they trying to indoctrinate the child to any particular point of view, whether it's pro-transgender or anti-transgender? Her face is just stunned. Or anti-gay or pro-gay? They shouldn't have any say at all when you're talking to a seven-year-old kid. Uh, I have strong thoughts on that, but I wanted to ask you because, uh, yeah. for better or worse, when he weighs into these things, it... it yeah, it influences. It does. It does. So first of all, it's not even accurate. His depiction of the bill is not accurate. Surprise! It is not only K to third grade, but then it has the word "or" in it. And honestly, if it was just kindergarten or third grade, I feel like there could have been you know a less outrage around that because we could we could try to work with the bill sponsor to see if there's a way to ensure that at least there's protections for kid conversations around mm-hmm. these topics. But the word "or." is in the bill. I don't care how many times these hyper-conservative voices want to ignore that. The word or is in the bill and it says or whenever not deemed age appropriate. That is not even defined, meaning that the Department of Education, which already removed anti-LGBTQ plus bullying curriculum from their website in December of 2021, would be the ones to decide when is it age appropriate to uh, acknowledge that LGBTQ plus people exist. And keep in mind that we've made such progress in academic settings around non-discrimination policies, which this one is clearly in the face of that. And, and we've also ha- have to address the high suicide rates among our young people, which is four times worse for children who identify as LGBTQ+. Isn't it astonishing, though, how conservatives like Joe Rogan, they think that if you just hide the existence of gay people from children, they won't grow up to be gay. Isn't that insane to think that way? Well, funny you mention hiding that, Mike, because he's going to bring up about kids and gays in the next video book that Kyle covered. I mean, I mean that's the implication, and how he right? Pro- he thinks gay that rights. gay people are so persuasive that if kids know about their existence at the age of seven, they'll just automatically turn gay like that the second they learn that gay people exist. So this really, like, this is about erasing gay people out of existence. So, what do you guys say about Rogan's cringy homophobia there? Oh, my God, the yeah. grooming. Oh, jeez, that was cringe. Oh, boy. Well, you literally sounded like you wanted to murder gay people. Yes, that was very bad, Rogan. But then... Like I said, Rogan could swing from being a progressive to a Nazi and then back to, like, center-left politics in three Rogan podcasts. Yep, it all depends on who he's watching. But then, we saw that, but then there's this video that Kyle covered. Joe Rogan calmly dismantles, laughs at anti-gay guests. Rewind it. Joe Rogan had a comedian named Ali Sadiq on his podcast, and um, there was a very uncomfortable moment. Now, I didn't watch the whole thing. I just watched the clip that was posted on Mediaite. That's the clip that you're about to see now. Um, my guess is, and verify this if you guys listen to the podcast, put it in the comment section. My guess is that they, you know, at some point the Dave Rubin thing came up, how Dave Rubin and his husband are adopting, no, I'm, excuse, I'm sorry, not adopting. They're um, having a kid, or is it two or one? Either way, they're having a kid or kids. And of course, they're a gay married couple, and they're like paying a surrogate to have the baby or babies. And, um, you know, this led to a lot of people on the far right to melt down and, you know, they compared it to slavery. They said it's immoral and unethical and kids. And Milo said he should be executed. Remember that? Oh, boy. That was that was funny watching that last episode and making fun of Ray Dubin, too. Hey, hey, Ray Dubin, you think they're still the tolerant more than liberals? Mm. Just need a mother and a father, yada, yada, yada. He will say that because he's a grifter. So there's this big back. Yep. Flash. And, I mean, Dave Rubin had cultivated a far-right audience, so, you know, 
on the one hand, it's like, of course they were gonna, this was gonna happen. I think Dave naively, genuinely thought that the right was over any sort of anti-gay feelings or bigotry, and it just, it just wasn't the case. Only with people around our age, like the majority of um, Republicans around our age are for gay rights, but they're still the vast minority. The majority of Republicans in power are still against gay rights, and until they die or gone, they're going to keep being so. A lot of them, lot just... of them are like, we, don't, we hate you if you're gay, we hate you if you're trans, we hate you if you're black, we hate you if you're Muslim, we hate you if you're not white, and we hate you if you're, if you're a woman. It wasn't the case. There was certainly a split on the right, but and maybe it was better than it would have been 10 years ago, but still, there was a lot of deep resentment over what Ruben was doing. So Ali Sadiq uh, starts commenting on this, and man, he's, he says some terrible things. Yes. And he, what he's going to say is almost up there is what Rogan just said earlier. Oh, boy. I think, I think Joe handled this pretty well because he calmly you know, dissects what he's saying and gives a, a counterpoint, which is a very powerful counterpoint, and then when Ali's not buying it, he just sort of laughs at him. So let's take a look. Let's not use the word normal and i'm gonna use the word in a natural reproductive society you want to send my son home to me and you want me to fucking lie to him about what what because my son don't understand if i we have two dogs outside it's both boy dogs there's no puppy out there that came out there's no fucking other dog out there <laughs> They came from them too. It's two, but over here, there's a female cane corso and it's a male cane corso. They had puppies. Why are you using dogs as an example to compare gay people? That's kind of weird. What do you want me to say to my son? What do you want me to say to my son? Do you want me to? I'll tell you what you could say. There are people in the world that are in love and want to fuck people of the same sex. Simple as that. Yeah. Not that hard. Make sense of your shit? Or... And likewise, there are people that want to fuck either one, bisexuality. Ooh. And there are people who don't want to fuck either people, asexuality. You want me to tell him the truth? Because this, because he's going to get the truth. You have two guys and they have a kid. You could say they adopted the kid. They, they're married and they adopted a kid. You could say they hired a lady to have their kid. I have a My gay neighbor that lives next to me. Why in the fuck does two men live in the house together with a kid? And they not his uncles. <laughs> I, he not understand that shit. It's no... You cannot explain this to this boy. You can't understand, explain gay people to him? They don't... Cause now I gotta explain that this is not the way this shit goes. And it don't make sense to his goddamn 48 year old father. <laughs> like, either. If I I've decide that... Women not in the cards for me. That's not what I want. Then I should forfeit the right to try to have a fucking kid too, because you're not doing the steps to take to make it a kid. So you think that you if someone's a gay, situation. they have a gay relationship, no kids, no kids. But what about if they adopt kids? They shouldn't have kids. It's not. You're not doing so. Ban gay not adoptions in a space for children. But if they want to adopt kids, you want to fuck somebody. What? No. Yeah, you want to put somebody in a position to be fucked up. It's like it's like getting a ah, dog. Ah, if you are uh, if you have yeah, two gay parents, yeah. you're fucked up. That Rogan missed one of the few ones. And this one, he's on our side now. <laughs> you, hey, uh, anti-gay guests, you do know there have been numerous studies that show that not only do gay couples raise kids just as well, some studies show that they raise kids better than heterosexual oh, couples. Yeah. Mm. Mm. But not having no fucking place for the dog to be. <clears throat> a kid who gets adopted by gay parents, you feel like automatically they're gonna get fucked up? They gonna be fucked up automatically. Really? <laughs> you don't think that they can I have a neighbor in California and they uh they had a surrogate raise their kid. They're two gay guys and they mixed their sperm up so they didn't know whose it was. And they hired a lady to get pregnant. And they shot it in there. And the first lady wanted to keep the baby. She's like, fuck it, I'm keeping the baby. And they, you know, they had to, they had to let her keep the baby because it was, she, it was inside of her body. She grew it and she was so attached to the baby that by, by the time it was born, she did not want to give up the baby. Exactly. And then that's honestly kind of one. fucked up if you had an agreement with that. Yeah. That's, that's pretty shitty. And then the second one gave up the baby. And the kid 
I watched him grow up. He was my neighbor for probably eight years, somewhere around there. I was friends with the, the gay couple, friends with the kid. Kid seemed fine. He seemed normal. Come by the house on a skateboard, hang out. He seemed like a normal kid. Hung out with my kid. He seemed okay to me. You don't think that's possible? You have a look on your face like there's no fucking way. Yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> Got nothing to say. Wow. <laughs> Based Rogan there. Where was this Rogan in the last video? Jesus. See what I mean? A oh. flip. That one, that time, he was fervently pro-gay rights. Calmly dismantling an idiot, just like how we would. What the fuck? <laughs> wow, holy shit. So, I think, I think... Oh, and Mike, did you see that video? Does that show... Oh, maybe Rogan is not a social conservative or an idiot on Fox. He's just brain-dead stupid when it comes to trans Everything. issues. Or... Uh, everything, I'd say pretty much everything that isn't um, MMA. Yeah, just like I said about Bill Maher. Rogan, same thing. They're just rich, out-of-touch out elitist pricks that just spend way too much time online, and then they see idiots cry and moan about something, and then he thinks it's stupid, and they're, that's why he keeps going with it. That's all it is. Yeah, if you come, pretty much. That's how it always is with these people. I think Joe handled that well. He gave the <laughs> counter-argument, and then he was like, he wasn't laughing with him, because dude wasn't laughing. He was sort of laughing at him for his ridiculous and bigoted position on this. So let's break this down. Um, he says, he's talking about his son. Like, how am I going to explain this to my son? You want me to lie to my son? To which I respond, you don't have to lie to your son. And why is it an issue explaining it to your son? He basically says, like, what do you want me to say? Make sense of it or tell him the truth? To which I respond, well, what do you think the truth is? And it's clear he thinks the truth is, like, only a man and a woman can have a baby, therefore only a man and a woman should be able to raise a baby. Um, but I don't know why he thinks that follows. Why does that follow? Why does it follow that if the only way they can make a baby is with the man and a woman, that therefore um, that gay married couples can't have kids, they can't adopt, they can't use a surrogate? He's like... You want me to explain this to my son? Yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. It's actually very straightforward and very simple. Sometimes, um, sometimes there are men or women who are not interested in the opposite sex. Sometimes they form a deep bond and fall in love with somebody of the same sex. And in a situation like that, they either adopt a kid, which is a kid who doesn't have parents at the moment, or they have a surrogate and they have a kid that way. And a surrogate is somebody who will have the baby that will then be their baby. Is that really that hard? To a well, I, I don't it understand. Is. There's such a resistance to the idea of like a basic explanation. And honestly, it's because he's he just intuitively feels like it's wrong or it's immoral and it's unethical. And he's projecting that out. But the fact of the matter is, I think the only place that that can come from is being raised in a very religious environment that's fundamentalist that like indoctrinates you with the idea that that's immoral or unethical because left to their own I don't think almost anybody would say it's wrong it's bad it's immoral it's unethical it's a problem it shouldn't be allowed I think the overwhelming majority of people would be like yeah it's just a different scenario where people are raised and to, to his point of like well if you can't make the baby you can't have the baby it's like okay well what if there's just an infertile couple should they not be allowed to adopt? Should they not be allowed to use a surrogate? If they're just an infertile man and woman? Or what if it's an older couple that's now infertile? Should they not be allowed to adopt? And by the way, I mean, I'm sure the situations vary, but in some of the places, some of the foster homes where the kids are, before they're adopted, some of them are brutal. So you're going to provide a much better life in most situations uh, if you do adopt the kid. So should the kid have to suffer because you feel... In your opinion, only people who can make the baby are allowed to, to raise the kid. It's just astonishingly close-minded, and he's super married to the position, and it's so rigid. It's, it's really crazy to see in real time, like, a very primitive, ancient belief espoused with such arrogance and confidence. He said he, his, his kid can't understand why there are two men living in a house 
with a kid and they're not his uncle. And it's like, okay, well, explain it to him. It's really not that difficult. It's really not that difficult at all. Um, if I decide women aren't in the cards for me, I should forfeit the right to have a kid too. That's what he said. Why? Why? There's no compelling reason for that. And look, there's some people who just, they're, they have this bigoted interpretation that like, if there are two men or two women raising a kid that like, there's got to be some weird sexual perversion thing there where it's pedophilia. But that is obviously not true. It's not remotely true. I, now, I don't know if that's what he's getting at, but it seems like that if you scratch the surface might not be too deep under there. You shouldn't have to forfeit the right to have a kid if you don't have the ability to have a kid. He said, quote, you're not in a, in, a, in a space for children. And then he said, this maybe was the worst part, it's like having a dog but not having any place for the dog to be. No. The, the, a kid of a gay couple is not like a dog without any place for the dog to be. Like, he seems to think it's going to, by definition, be a, a bad environment for the kid. He said, quote, they're going to be fucked up automatically. On what planet do you believe that? Like, what does this guy think? All gay people, 24-7, are walking around wearing assless chaps and doing uh, crack out of people's assholes? Like, what do you think is going on? According Why is it a to conservatives, that is indeed the case. <laughs> uh, yeah. Fucked up situation automatically. It's not at all. In fact, there was a study on this, and we've talked about it on this show. It came out years ago. But the kids of gay parents are actually phenomenally Wait. successful. We just talked about that. I think that. they actually do better in school on well, average than the, the kids of, of straight parents. By the way, even if that wasn't the case, it's still okay for gay people to have kids. I and also, you do know heterosexual couples are fucked up too in a lot of ways, you know. Yeah. The year's 2022. I find it astounding I have to go out there and argue these things. And then, now I don't know enough about this guy, Ali Sadiq, but oftentimes, the same conservatives who scream about, you know, freedom oh, yeah. and personal choice, they turn around and say, well, a gay couple shouldn't have the freedom or the personal choice to adopt a kid or raise a kid or have a, a surrogate and have a kid. Joe seemed to be genuinely perplexed by the fact that this guy was saying this stuff. He was like, I don't know, child. Like, I, my neighbor, my neighbors were gay. They had a kid. The kid seemed great. The kid seemed totally fine. I don't see what the problem is. And the guy's looking at Joe like he's crazy. And Joe he couldn't help but laugh his way out of the awkward situation because what else can you do but laugh at such ignorance? Because that's what it is. It's deep ignorance. Look, I don't, I don't care that this guy has a personal hang-up. Your personal hang-up is irrelevant. You want to make policy based on your personal hang-up because you were raised in an uber-religious environment and you were indoctrinated with bigoted fundamentalist beliefs? Is that what you want to do? You want to destroy other people's life and their own choices and their own freedom? Because you have a feeling that something is icky and you just don't like it. It's unbelievable. It's, and it's the same kind of thinking, by the way, that I don't know if you guys know this. Sodomy used to be illegal in a lot of different states. And it's that same feeling of like, ooh, uh, random, like, religious yes, people think, ooh, that is, is icky and is gross. It, no oral. Non-sodomy was at one point. Well, no anal a ban it. And a married wife. Very love each other very much, vaginal, missionary style, full procreation, taking between about five and five and twelve minutes. Yep, because that's the funny thing about those Sami laws. Even though most times, like over like the last few decades before they were repealed, they mostly were done to go up against like gay couples. But no, those yeah. laws, sodomy also applies to heterosexual couples. Anal sex, oral sex, yeah. all that. Those are all sodomy, even by heterosexual couples. I don't like it, ban yeah. it. It's that same kind of thinking. I think it's icky, so it shouldn't be allowed. Who the fuck are you? Why should anybody care what you think? You haven't established yourself as some sort of moral authority. If anything, it's the exact opposite. You've clearly not thought through these issues in any serious way. You have this, uh, this either this moral intuition which misfires massively or you've been indoctrinated or it's both it's the indoctrination that led to the misfiring but either way man jesus christ 2022 that's where this guy's at so anyway again i think joe handled that well he provided the counter argument explained how it's fine and then when homeboy wasn't buying it he just started laughing at him what else can you do i, I don't know what else you could do but that guy is uh is off to say the least but look you go look at the replies to what dave rubin said 
See what people were saying on Twitter. There were a lot of prominent yeah. conservative. Milo yeah. Yiannopoulos Whoa, who says he's ex-gay. Oh, please. He has dreams about dicks. Um, you have Mark Dice, who was coming after uh, Ruben for it. You have a lot of conservatives, prominent and otherwise, who were like comparing it to slavery, saying this is wrong, this is Milo bad. Milo should be executed. Baby needs a mother and a father, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. And this is yeah. an extension of that same kind of thinking. So it's, it's far right thinking. It's restrictive authoritarian thinking. And usually it's tied to fundamentalist religious notions ever since ex- so yeah what do you yeah. gotta say about that double-edged sword about rogan yeah, one. that was but crazy it's, it's understandable though uh, like, it's a, a weird one so far yeah that is weird but hey it just shows like we've been saying for years about rogan he's an idiot who just lists who just parrots whatever he's talking to if he talks to progressive yeah. he's a progressive yeah. he talks to a right-wing dipshit He's a right-wing dipshit, except in this one circumstance. Other than maybe when he destroyed Can- Candace Owens, remember, on climate oh, change. Or when he, he made, um, he gave Steven Crowder a period over weed, remember? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, um, oh yeah, they raved Dubin over, um, regulations, remember? <laughs> but, yeah. Like, guys, not only is it it, but it really comes down to this. He, just like I said about Bill Maher, they support gay rights. I'm pretty sure Maher does, as he said before. I haven't heard anything since. But that video was just recently about Rogan. So he obviously supports gay rights, and he'll deal with homophobes when they show up. But he's just a smug, out-of-touch, wealthy, elitist prick when it comes to, like, transgender issues or, like, don't say gay, Bill. He probably sees idiots... Make the stupid arguments that conservatives um, strawman the left about all the time, and he thinks that's real, like prevalent. Therefore, he talks about that argument all the time. Plus, he buys the framing of oh, it's just nine to I mean, I'm, was it first? I mean, kindergarten to third grade and all that. A lot of that is just very, very appealing to people, even if they're pro gay rights. Like a lot of people just find find a thought of like teaching like sexuality to kids wrong, even if it's something very, very bland and mild for crying out loud. Something so basic that just triggers him immensely. And that's why, Mike, you shouldn't just straight up call him or Bill a, cons- a social conservative. Um, you just call yeah. them idiots. They're smug, out-of-touch, elitist pricks. Yeah, because as I, as I said, with um, Rogan, um, with um, Rogan, as I said, third time I've said it, and I've a bit of a broken record, but he could literally swing from progressive to Nazi and then back to center left politics in three things. Like the only in things three. you could, the only things you could probably go against him consistently on is him being anti-vax and being an idiot on transgender rights. That's pretty yeah. much it. But on this stuff, you gotta realize. He's just an inconsistent flip-flopper, depending on who he's talking to. And there are a lot of people that are pro-gay rights, but unfortunately are for that anti-gay bill in Florida because the arguments were just that appealing to them. All right, so now on to the next topic. This one just came up recently. Clarence Thomas's scandal recently, if you didn't hear about it. Uh, heard so, about it. So let's see, I think I had a V on it. Because, let's see. And of course, don't you love when it freezes? Ah, here we go. So, I think Mike... Well, actually, I'll, I won't say things. I think Mike covers it enough. Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez is calling on Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas to either resign or, if he refuses, be impeached. This is following the bombshell revelations about his wife, Ginny Thomas, and the text messages that she sent to White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows, basically coordinating with insurrectionists to overturn the 2020 election and effectively end democracy in the United States. Yeah, Clarence Thomas's wife was heavily involved in January 6th and kept trying to get yeah. and kept trying to get um the main people in in um Trump's administration to overthrow the 2020 election. And that's what the scandal is about. States. Now, we're going to get to what AOC said specifically, but first I want to explain why this call for impeachment or resignation is the only logical conclusion because of the threat that Clarence Thomas poses to democracy. He's proven that he is incapable of being impartial as a Supreme Court justice. So when the Supreme Court rejected Donald Trump's request to withhold documents from the House Select Committee on January 6th, can you guess who the one vote in dissent on the Supreme Court was? 
Well, of course, it was Clarence Thomas. He was the only Supreme Court justice who voted that Trump should be able to withhold these documents, that they shouldn't be made public. Why? Well, because it's obvious that these documents would implicate his wife. And now because he lost, he was the sole vote. Now we are learning just how close his wife was to this effort to open. <clears throat> Honestly, for the next video, we should probably, I mean, episode, we should probably talk about this because there's a lot, and I mean a lot of stuff that's come out recently about how, like, how close Ted Cruz was involved in it and how Trump yep. actively was inciting January 6th more than we knew about and oh. all that other stuff. Oh, boy, there's a whole bunch of shit we need to cover in there because, oh, boy, it makes it look a lot worse than it was originally as we fought overturn the 2020 election and if you haven't heard about what she said in these text messages to uh, mark meadows she's just crazy i don't know how else to put it and i'm assuming given that they're married he believes the same things that she believes so as grace panetta of insider reports supreme court justice clarence thomas's wife floated an outlandish conspiracy that members of the biden crime family and ballot fraud co-conspirators were being sent to barges off of guantanamo bay to face military trials for sedition in newly uncovered text messages with former white house chief of staff mark meadows biden crime family and ballot fraud co-conspirators elected officials bureau Democrats, social media censorship mongers, fake stream media reporters, etc., are being arrested and detained for ballot fraud right now and over coming days, and will be living in barges off Gitmo to face military tribunals for sedition, Thomas wrote in a message on November 5th, 2020, two days after the presidential election, according to the Post. In other texts, Thomas urged Meadows not to concede the election, privately trashed Republicans in Congress, rallied behind controversial lawyer Sidney Powell, and told Meadows to release the Kraken and save us from the left taking America down. The Hope Biden more. Family steal this election. Yeah, the up. We want our freedom for the world. Give us our freedom, Joe Biden. Biden. So that's what she was tweeting during the election. But on January 6th, we know that the organizations that she is a part of were working with people to overturn the election. They were urging people in certain states like Arizona and Pennsylvania to pressure lawmakers to override the will of the people, send rogue electors to the Electoral College, and basically kill democracy. So this is someone yep. who quite literally is against democracy, and she's married to a Supreme Court justice. That should horrify everyone. And obviously, yep. because he's close to her at a minimum, that should make it very difficult for him to be impartial. I don't know about you, but if one of my family members did something bad, I know that people would suspect that I wouldn't be able to be impartial, so I would recuse myself just for optics sake, even if I could, uh, you know, feel as if I would be impartial. But he did not do that. He voted to protect these documents from getting out. Thankfully, he wanted he to protect his wife. Yeah. And it's not just that he voted to protect his wife and that he's married to someone who is an authoritarian. As Brian Tyler Cohen explains, reminder, Clarence Thomas covered up over $685,000 that his wife Jenny received from the Right Wing Heritage Foundation. In the space on the disclosure form where he was supposed to write his spouse's income, he wrote none instead. So when you consider Ooh, that and the fact that, should that he be was something the sole illegal, that, should sense, be, that yeah. actually, I think, would have way more of a justifications for being impeached. Because honestly, not going to lie, I don't think... It would be really a valid reason to impeach him because, oh, his wife's a crazy person, therefore he needs to be impeached with. That's a little too far for me. But this, definitely, if that's the case, that is just blatantly illegal. And corrupt. Against Donald Trump giving these papers to the House Select Committee on January 6th, I think it's obvious to deduce that he's compromised. He's not... Also, he had a health scare recently, if you didn't know about that. Like, around the same yeah, time. Yeah, I heard about that. So, yeah, Clarence, so, Clarence, maybe you should resign for your health. And that way, we can actually get another progressive SCOTUS judge. In. And, hey, if since we mentioned the other day about um, um Jackson. Uh, he, Susan Collins, I think it was, that idiot Republican and senator in Maine. She actually supports, she's actually said she's going to vote for her. So, if one of the oh. idiot, if... If Manson or Cinema decided to fuck everything up, that's one less thing we have to worry about. So hopefully we're going to be closer to getting her. Not an impartial arbiter of justice. He's someone who's he's trying to protect... One and we can count on Manson and Cinema. Yep. His wife. He's hiding details that are crucial about his wife. This is completely unacceptable. And let me just explain to you. 
she isn't just saying that we should overturn the election. She's also espousing QAnon conspiracy theories. This whole idea that the Biden crime family would be arrested. I mean, this is a QAnon conspiracy theory. There is this idea that on January 6th or during the um, ceremony to swear in Joe Biden, Trump would all of a sudden start arresting people. And that's when everything would begin. She's essentially a QAnon 2020 truther. She's insane. And her husband on the Supreme Court is doing things to protect her. So it's not just that Clarence Thomas is married to an insurrectionist, and that's a little bit too close for comfort. He has lied on disclosure forms, and on top of that, he is voting as a Supreme Court justice to hide documents about his wife to the... Yeah, he should be definitely forced to recuse himself in that regard. ...public. Absolutely. That's unacceptable. So he needs to be held accountable, and as AOC explains, this is what needs to happen. Clarence Thomas should resign. If not, his failure to disclose income from right-wing organizations, recuse himself from matters involving his wife, and his vote to block the January 6th commission from key information must be investigated and could serve as grounds for impeachment. She continues, Congress must understand that a failure to hold Clarence Thomas accountable sends a loud, dangerous signal to the full court, Kavanaugh, Barrett, and the rest, that his acts are fair game. This is a tipping point. Inaction is a decision to erode and further delegitimize SCOTUS. Like they care though. <laughs> you think it's, yeah. you think everyone in power gives a shit about that? They don't care at all about that. And she's absolutely correct. The Supreme Court is facing a legitimacy crisis, the likes of which it never has seen. The closest I could point to is the Lochner era, but this is next level. You have a Supreme Court justice married to somebody who's authoritarian who wanted to kill democracy in the united states and actively colluded with them instructed them to not concede the election worked with insurrectionists is part of these organizations taking money from writing or organizations that are instructing people to protest uh pressure lawmakers to uh send rogue electors to the electoral college this is a dangerous individual so if you allow him to stand at the supreme court with no accountability then anything goes anything goes so what's the point of the Supreme Court? If they're not going to protect the Constitution, then why listen to them? We might as well just disregard everything they have to say. Now, Ilhan Omar was... I mean, there is precedent, precipice with that. It has happened before with presidents. It's actually the first to call for impeachment of Clarence Thomas. She did this on the 24th. But at this point, I mean, most House Democrats are too spineless to go there. And this was explained in a... And, of course, we got to also recognize he's never going to be in peace. The Republicans are never going to support it. Hell, they wouldn't be surprised mm -hmm. if Manchin and well, Sinema are going to um, support it. You need two-thirds of the well, House and Senate. They would spend, spend every single day um, impeaching Joe Biden 387 times. Yep. In a political article where uh, they discussed how most Democrats simply believe that they should defer to the January 6th committee for now. And Nancy Pelosi called for Clarence Thomas to recuse himself uh, when it comes to cases related to January 6th, saying, I've always thought he should recuse himself, but he's already demonstrated that he's not going to recuse himself. If he were going to do that and do the right thing, he would have done so during that case where he was the sole dissenting vote against Trump handing over documents. But he didn't do that, presumably to protect his wife and his own reputation. So recuse him, recusing himself, I mean, we're so far beyond that conversation. Now we need to talk about real accountability. But even the authors of this Politico article that kind of describe the position of House Democrats, they're incredibly naive. They write, there's no indication that Clarence Thomas was aware of his wife's contacts with Trump's West Wing or was influenced by them in his decision making. Bullshit. So you mean to tell me that the authors of this article are naive enough to believe that him being the sole vote against Trump handing over January 6th documents is just an organic conclusion he reached. Well, if he reached that conclusion on his own accord, it's probably because he agrees with his wife that the election was stolen. But I, I think that we are adults and we can logically deduce that he knew how involved his wife was and he didn't want her to be exposed. And now we're seeing the situation where she possibly may have to testify before the House Select Committee on January 6th. So you don't think and it's reasonable that too. to think that his vote was to uh. prevent that, prevent all of this from getting out? Really? Are we that naive? Do we have to pretend as if he's still impartial? I mean, it's ridiculous. So the only logical takeaway from all of this 
is what AOC and Ilhan Omar are calling for, either for his full resignation from the Supreme Court or for him to be impeached. Now, that's not to or say that he's likely to resign or likely to be impeached. It's essentially politically impossible. But just because Republicans won't go along with it, just because Democrats won't even go along with it, doesn't mean that morally it's not the correct thing to do because that is the correct thing to do. When you have a Supreme Court justice who's been compromised, who's incapable of being impartial, to protect the legitimacy of the Supreme Court, this is the only reasonable course of action. You have to hold him accountable, or as she explained, to send a message to current Supreme Court justices and future Supreme Court justices that you can basically get away with anything as a Supreme Court justice. And that's not okay. So if you want to protect the Supreme Court and by extension protect the Constitution, he has to resign or be impeached. And at a minimum, House Democrats and Senate Democrats should be calling for this because if you let him get away with this, then nothing matters. You could just be openly corrupt in the United States as a government official and there will be no repercussions. I mean, I I thought that we're supposed to respect the Constitution and rule of law. And yet Clarence Thomas can work to protect an insurrection that he's married to and nothing? No, I reject that. He should be impeached, and anyone who's not calling for it, in my opinion, is a coward. I don't know if it, you should go that far, Mike. Maybe there's, mm-hmm. like I said, I don't know. Like, so impeach him because his wife is involved in this crap? That seems a little too far for me. Mm-hmm. But impeach for the, impeach for the, um, that um, shit with his taxes? That's an actual crime. That's something I can be yeah, down with. You can, you can get him on that. Yeah, that's more likely to succeed, too, in that regard. So, yeah, we got to say about this scandal, about Clarence Thomas being an idiot that should be gone anyway. Yeah, no surprise. I mean, I mean, it's like, the question is, how much does um his wife happen to influence over him? Who knows? Because that could influence... Um, then we might think that, was to the fact that, that could get him down on January 6th because it means he could be an anti-democrat as well, which is the opposite of what you should be in as a Supreme Court, Court Justice. Just wait any moment before he's going to say they're just going after me because I'm black or something. <laughs> of course. Just like Candace Owens. He's going to say the <laughs> Oh my God. Of being a grift, a conservative grifter, because remember, Candace Owens used to be a lefty. Yes. She teamed up with uh, what's her face? It was Brianna Wu to make that social autopsy doxing site. Oh, and then that's... when that didn't work out, she changed to being a initially a conservative and now a fascist. You gotta wonder if Clarence Thomas wonders if he dropped dead and still has to deal with this later. <laughs> Which would be great for us because I'll be getting another replacement, and that would actually lower yeah. the five four, which we need. <laughs> so, be good. so get wrecked, enjoy that cap, Clarence Thomas. So now, what's up next? Uh, I think next up is Will Smith assaulting Chris Rock. Oh my God! I did not really care, but now this is all like Emmys crap. Of course, I don't pay attention to movies or entertainment or anything like that. But of course, Bye. since but since Mike. Kyle and them talked about it. We gotta talk about this as this is just disgusting assault mm-hmm. as Will Smith slapped Chris Rock for making a joke about his wife and oh boy is it cringe. Yeah, so last night was kind of um his wife's alopecia, but that did not justify going up and slapping him. Uh, the Oscars, of course, uh, I don't watch the Oscars, uh, zero interest in it. Um here, but here. there was a moment that absolutely blew up everybody's talking about it it lit twitter on fire there are giant debates happening now uh i'll I'll show you the clip and then i mean i guess you guys will determine whether or not you think this is really debate worthy but i have uh strong thoughts on it and i'm surprised that there's any deviation really from the general core of what i'm going to argue here but anyway um chris rock gets up there tells a joke the butt of the joke is jada pinkett smith will's wife and uh then this happens you're going to see the joke you're going to see the reaction. Try to soak in all the little bits and pieces because it's all relevant. Take a look. Oh, Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. All right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, that, was a, that was a nice one. Okay. I'm out here. Uh-oh. Richard. <laughs> 
Oh, wow. Good God, what a hit that was, wow. too. Jeez. Yeah. Will Smith just smacked the I shit just out of him. He just like a champ. Yep. To be fair. Chris, Will Smith just smacked the shit out of me. He said, at least he had a good sport. <laughs> Wow, Cry more, dude. Will Smith. Yes. It was a G.I. Mm. Jane joke. Keep my wife's name out your fucking mouth. I'm going to, okay? Keep coping. <laughs> I can uh, hope. Open okay. seed more. Whoa. Okay, so uh, there a bunch of moments stick out there. First of all, at the end, uh, Chris Rock... I hey, Will Smith, maybe we should try out for... um. Uh, um, VC, I mean, I'm VA for an anime with that kind of a slap. <laughs> I think he does a good job of covering at the end when he's like, that was the greatest night of television in history, or whatever the fuck he said. Um, handled it professionally. Now, if you go back and watch that clip again, uh, you'll notice that there's a moment there where Chris looks like he's about to say something else and, like, start another joke because that's that's in his nature, and it looks like, you know, it may be targeted at Will and Jada yet again, but then he catches himself and backs it up. He could have, you know, kept roasting them after that, although there was a pretty big incentive put in front of him, like, you probably don't want to do that. But nonetheless, it looked to me like he was about to start saying something else, like, you know, crack another joke at Will's expense or something, and then he just reeled it in and was like, well, at least that was good TV and moved on. So I think that uh, Chris Rock handled that well. Now, let me break this down for you because, you know, some people might not understand the context here. So G.I. Jane, you know, G.I. Jane is badass female soldier and she has a shaved head. And um, so Chris Rock makes that joke because Jada has a shaved head. Now, my guess is, and I don't know for sure, my guess is Chris Rock thought that Jada just had a shaved head because she, like, chose to have a shaved head. When in reality, she actually has this condition called alopecia, which leads to like basically patchy balding. And so she's, she's you know, spoken openly about that. I, I don't think Chris Rock uh, knew that. I think that he just thought it was a joke about her hairstyle, her haircut, um, thinking that it's something that she chose. And also, by the way, the joke is a comparison to G.I. Jane. G.I. Jane is like a badass. And so it's almost like there's really nothing that that's putting anybody down over it it's like saying you'll be in gi jane too because you're also a badass and like like won't that be cool but you know i don't think he knew she had alopecia first of all but second of all even if he did and we'll get to more on this in a little bit but even if he did um the joke is still fair game now again i'm going to come back to that in a little bit um so that was the joke now at first i don't know if you guys caught it but will laughed so he was laughing at first and it seemed like a genuine laugh it didn't see because i was i was watching closely i watched it a few times to see if will gave it the old like ha 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 like the old like yeah that's so funny no it didn't look to me like he did that now the camera does cut away from him so i can't say with 100 percent certainty but it looked like he was genuinely laughing and then <clears throat> i think what happened was and again this part's up to interpretation you guys can tell me what you think but it, i think what happened was he looked at jada saw that jada was genuinely upset and then that's when he sort of puffed his chest out and did what he did there um Oh, but then, of course, the next question is, was it a work? Like, was it, because that's the other, some percentage of people are saying, like, well, they obviously staged this. And I think probably the biggest piece of evidence that they offer that is, well, Will was laughing. And way he too hard that. to be Again, I think he just, act. he was laughing, then he looked at yeah, himself, and was upset, why, and then was too he started getting angry. It's, it's a slap that the Free Stooges wish they could do all the time and get away with it. <laughs> um, but I don't, I don't think it's a work, man. And let me say this: If it was a work, they are better than the best actors I've ever seen in my life. That was anim that was Chris Rock um, looked genuinely anime level there, shit and Will seemed genuinely yeah. pissed off. Now, granted, Will Smith is a phenomenal actor. I mean, didn't he just literally win the Oscar for best actor? Of course. So, but still, it it, it looked real to me, dog. It looked real to me. I'll set it at like eighty percent. I think it's real. Twenty percent. I think it's fake. I'm pretty certain that it was real. Again, I'll leave that up to you guys. You can determine. You can fight it out in the comment section or whatever. I'm sure a lot of you guys are fighting it out on Twitter right now. Um, <clears throat> so, now, I I'm going to get to the main point in a second, and the main point is something that <clears throat> I'm, I'm concrete on, like, I'm not, I'm not budging on the main point at all, and, in fact, I think it's kind of crazy that anybody is, but I saw a Twitter poll on this, I saw a Twitter poll on this, and the question was, was w Will Smith in the right, and there was yes and no, and I swear to God, the breakdown was 50 50. I remember seeing polls oh, that was like 80. Oh, wow. 
50. Bro, I've seen polls that was like 80% supporting Will Smith. Like, what the oh, fuck? Oh, oh. What the fuck? 50? Twitter is the place that that you go when you want to learn that literally anything can happen and all of a sudden it becomes debatable. It becomes like a raging debate. It doesn't matter what the fuck it is. All of a sudden you go on Twitter and there's somebody who's, or there's at least at least like 30 or 40% of people who are taking the position that seems like there's no way anybody would take this position. Now, um, after this, the craziest part is after this, Will Smith won an Oscar. And in his, he went and gave his acceptance speech and he was saying that he's a fierce defender of his family and he compared himself to, you know, the father of Venus and Serena Williams. They said he was a crazy father. He was like, look, art imitates reality. Apparently, you know, I'm the, I'm the crazy father too. Um, You're crazy indeed. And he also went on to say, like, I'm on a mission from God or something like that. Oh, no. And then he spoke about peace and love. And the irony. Come on, man. Come on, man. He was crying through the whole thing, which, look, I kind of understand. Like, I get it. You want an Oscar. That's an emotional moment for a lot of people. But at the same time, he's not crying about, about the Oscar. He was just sort of tearing up and, and talking about being on a mission from God, and he's a fierce defender of his family. And um, I do have to say, though, he seemed to me both, you know, by his actions and by what he was saying when he was talking, he seemed to me like he was just sort of unhinged. And he was after, there was an after party that he went to where he was, like, dancing and getting jiggy with it and, and singing his song and dancing with the Oscar and... Everybody was just sort of like having a good time. Now, Chris Rock has come. I guess the LAPD or somebody asked him like, "Hey, are you going to file charges?" And he's like, "No, no, no, I'm not going to file charges." And so, you know, but there is t chatter right now about maybe they're going to take his Oscar away. Now, look, I wouldn't do that. The reason I wouldn't do that is because him winning the Oscar has nothing to do with what what he did. That like the Oscar stands on its own. Like his performance as an actor stands on its own and you can't say like well now he's not the best actor because of something else that happened that's just not related like i'm you have to the punishment has to fit the crime in my uh in my opinion and i don't think that that fits the crime i, I think it's a total non sequitur so i wouldn't take the oscar away yeah. uh it's all on chris rock to determine whether or not he wants to press the charge he said he's definitely that happens a lot in the NFL, too, when it comes to, like, getting players into the Hall of Fame because they did, like, some sort of crime or whatever, and that should disqualify them. No. That Hall of Fame is for what they did on the field, not what they did off the field, for crying out loud. Let's not, let's not add that on. You're not going to press the charges. Um, but now, look, let's get to the, to the meat of the conversation here, which is a raging debate on Twitter as we speak right now. Is this acceptable? No. For the life of me, I cannot understand how anybody can say yes. Yeah, really. I, just, I don't get it. I just don't get it. How? Because I guess people are trying to sympathize with Will, and they're saying, hey, somebody said something really fucked up about your wife. Cool. So now you're going to, like, stand up Cry for your more. wife or whatever. It's like the macho oh, thing to do. Me. Guys, I regret to inform you, that is indeed not the macho thing to do. That is the... If anything, it's kind of misandrous and misogynist to assume that you should do that. Yep. Petty, insecure, and fragile thing to do. That is the least macho thing that anybody could ever do. So you're going to resort to physical violence over words. Over words. I was over just tweeting about this. Too. There's a reason why the First Amendment yeah. protects free expression, free speech, freedom of religion. You know, uh, part of free expression and free speech, you're allowed to joke without the government suppressing you. So, and, and the idea is there shouldn't be physical violence imparted on people or you shouldn't be locked in a cage because of words. And so this that is a joke. That was a mean joke. You can say it was a bad joke. But to resort to physical violence, telling a joke and resorting to physical violence are in totally different moral universes. Never mind just moral categories, totally different universes. Obviously, the violence is a colossal escalation. And you got to keep it real, man. If you're somebody who is in a position of, uh, you know, being a celebrity, being known, that's par for the course, dog. If you've achieved any level of celebrity or public acknowledgement, doesn't matter how small, that's going to happen, like, it's going to happen where people are going to make fun of you, people are going to shit on you, people are going to despise you, people might make hate accounts around you, like, that's what happens. And look, it's just, everything balances out, because at the same time, Will Smith is viewed as one of the greatest actors of all time, and so many people love him, and so of course there's going to be some percentage of people who don't. And that's just, you got to roll with the punches, that it is what it is. And so if you can't, the old saying goes, if you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen. And my guess is he enjoys being famous. He enjoys this life he's created. So you got to roll with the punches on that. 
the idea of setting the precedent of like, comedian tells a joke, I don't care if it's mean or if it's bad or if it goes too far or whatever, a comedian tells a joke and then we're debating whether or not it's okay to do violence in response to that? Th think of the precedent that sets. I said, you thought this was bad. Go watch any of the roast battles. Have you ever seen any of those Comedy Central roasts? This joke was tame compared to the shit that you see on those things. It just was. Now, if we apply this standard objectively, where some people say, he's doing the right thing, he's defending his wife's honor, etc., etc., should every roast battle turn into a melee? Where everybody's beating everybody's ass because people are insecure and have uh, hurt feelings and are fragile? No, 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 no. That makes absolutely no sense. And of course, the uh, biggest piece of hypocrisy of all are the people who on the one hand will turn around and talk about the suppression of free speech on college campuses and how comedians can't make a joke anymore without having the mob come after them and then turn around and say well I think what Will Smith did to Chris Rock was based because he's defending his wife's honor or whatever no 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 that's totally unacceptable look I wasn't even would be talk surprised about if those saying that are just conservative dipshits yep. that only care about things that they like but the thing that made me feel like I want to go out here and say something now is that I saw the reaction, even on my Twitter timeline, where it literally appeared like a 50-50 proposition. Where a lot of people were like, hey man, look, I can't understand where he's coming from. Chris Rock stepped out of line. He said something fucked up. Cold. He did this, he did that. I simply do not give a fuck how fucked up what he said was. Violence is only acceptable in self-defense. That's yep. it. That is... Getting getting roasted at a joke is not worthy of violence at all. It's a joke, and he's doing his job. This is his job. This is what he does. Also, I'm kind of wondering if maybe Will Smith was a little bit jealous that Chris Rock might be better comedian than him. Mm. <laughs> and in the context of sitting in the front row at the Oscars, you're consenting to having people roast you, any of the hosts roast you. Yep, yep, yep. I, it is what it is, man. And so, look, it just strikes me that he's genuinely fragile. I mean, I make fun of myself all the time when I do, like, Fall Guys for crying out loud. I call myself the golden turd of failure on there. I roast myself. I can laugh at myself. Why can't you? And I will say it, it's a little weird that there was that whole thing that exploded with Will Smith and his wife, Jada Pinkett, Pinkett Smith, and how Jada Pinkett Smith and August Alsina had a relationship, and... um. Apparently, August Alsina doesn't have a scratch on him. And Will, to me, whatever he says, he looks to me like he wasn't really all that happy about the fact that Jada was basically dating this younger man. Now, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's an open relationship. Maybe he is genuinely okay with it. From what I could gather, watching them talk about it in various forums, it struck me like Will was deeply hurt at the fact that Jada Pinkett Smith was looking elsewhere. So you got August Alsina and Jada Pinkett Smith in a relationship, and... A lot of stuff was going down in that relationship, and he don't have a scratch on him, so you're allowed to have sex with his wife, but you can't make a joke about his wife. Yeah. Again, I'm just trying to find the moral standards here, man. I'm just trying to find what is acceptable and what isn't acceptable when it comes to violence. Now, of course, in my opinion, neither one of those things would be okay with violence. Neither one of them is okay. Even if there was no consent on Will's part, and Jada just cheated with August Alsina, in that situation, good, I'm glad there's no violence. That's a good thing. But you can't do violence over a joke, even if it was a mean joke, even if it was a bad joke, whether he knew about the alopecia or didn't know about the alopecia, and by the way, now you have, there's the Streisand effect here, right? Because presumably, Will Smith felt like that was disrespectful and it hurt his feelings, it hurt his wife's feelings, and you, it was a taboo subject and you can't cross that line, I can't believe you crossed that line, but now, way more people know about the alopecia, and way more people know about this topic which Will Smith and his wife view as taboo. Put that because you assaulted on, Chris Rock over it. If you didn't assault Chris Rock over it, only the people who watch the Oscars would know about it. Now, granted, that's a lot of people, but now it's probably at least double that because this thing's going to make news globally. Everywhere they're going to be talking about it. So even from a purely pragmatic and practical perspective... the only reason why we're talking about it is because Mike and Kyle yeah. talk about it. Otherwise, I wouldn't have said shit about it. This is something that you don't like and you don't want people to hear it. Well, you just... The opposite happened. You made it so more people are going to hear it now. But... Look, it, it's amazing to me. And... I, the substantive point to make here is, oh, there definitely are multiple justice systems, that's for damn sure. And if you're rich and powerful, like, if that was, if this exact scenario unfolded anywhere in America, among poor people, among working people, somebody would be taken out in handcuffs. Now, again, I'm not saying that should happen to Will Smith. If Chris Rock doesn't want to press charges, Chris Rock doesn't want to press charges, you know, and that's his prerogative, that's totally fine. 
But if this happened anywhere in America, and it was poor people, and it was working class people, somebody would be taking out handcuffs. That's for damn sure. And we have a situation with that duck. And if it was a black person, that'd be, that'd be dragged down in the fucking ambulance if they're lucky. Yeah. It doesn't happen. And in fact, the show goes on like almost like nothing happened. You know? So. It shows you something about wealth. It shows you something about power. And look, I understand. For the people who are sympathizing with Will on this, I get the idea that we've all, like, I grew up with Will Smith. I love Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. His career is astounding. I, I love every aspect of it. I think he's a phenomenal actor. I think he's funny. You know? I guess um, it's a good thing. I so I grew up with him, and I like him, which leads me more, so to be more likely to <laughs> sympathize with him in a situation like this. But there's that old saying that justice is supposed to be blind. You know, it doesn't matter the entire backstory and how much you like somebody, how much you care about somebody. That's why when there is a crime that's committed, you have a jury of your peers, and there are no biases in that jury. They can't be somebody who's known you forever and really like you and relate to you because you're supposed to look, evaluate the action based on the merits of what happened, not based on all this other baggage that you're bringing into it. So I get feeling sympathetic to an extent, but you know who I feel even worse for? Chris Rock. I feel even worse for him because he just got his ass beat. He got hit in the face because he was doing his job. But look, credit to him because, again, he let the show carry on in a professional manner. He said he's not going to press charges, so he's being the bigger man on it. And to Will Smith, man, he just he strikes me as unbalanced. He strikes me as unbalanced. He strike, strikes me as unhinged. He strikes me as unhappy, you know? And um, it's just a shame that any of this happened. Obviously, this should have never happened. You can't lay this precedent. So now anybody gets anytime anybody gets offended by a joke, now it's a debatable thing if the comedian gets their ass beat. Obviously, that has a chilling effect on comedy. Nobody's going to be able to say anything. And everybody everybody gets, a, you know, a mountain of justifications and rationalizations because they're in their fifis and they're snowflakes. No. Just get over it. Look, get over it. That's part of being an adult. That's part of, you know, especially as a public figure. I know this triggers a lot of leftists, but yes, everything is up to being mocked. Everything. Everything and anything. And you can go cope if you don't like that. Here. If you don't like it, okay, then try your best to hide yourself from it. Don't pay attention to it. Don't immerse yourself in it. And every now and then when you happen to cross paths with something that, that triggers you, let it slide. Let it slide. Because, again, in my opinion, the more macho thing to do is to not react as he reacted. The more macho thing to do is to take your lumps. Because everybody's getting ripped on, man. That's par for the course. And that it, it is true, man. That Hollywood room, it is true that college campuses and like Hollywood rooms are the most uptight motherfuckers on the planet. And this is a great example of it right here, you know? Because forget, like, in comedian circles, people will say the most over-the-top things to each other that really go for the soft spots. And that's just part of the culture. That's par for the course. And even in, like, political commentator circles, it, the, there is, there's some of that. It's not as bad as comedians. It's not as much as comedians, but there's some of that. But it appears to me in Hollywood, the, it's the exact opposite ethos. That everybody needs to be fake 24-7. Everybody needs to walk yep. on eggshells 24-7. And that entire culture to me is gross. That entire culture to me is synthetic. You know? And so yep. it's not Careful something that I relate Kyle, to at all by any stretch of the imagination. And it, again, it's astounding <laughs> to me that something like that could happen. And half of the people fucks. on Twitter yes. are like, Chris Rock sort of had it coming, dog. So now, um, because, because look, you have to have a standard when it comes to violence, and you guys know I've talked about this all the time, whether it comes to international affairs or whether it comes to personal affairs, I think the only time violence is justified is self-defense from imminent attack. And so, by my standard of violence, the only person who would have been in the right there to enact any sort of violence is Chris Rock to defend himself from what Will Smith was doing. Yep. Anytime it's words and then it gets escalated to violence, whoever escalates it to violence is in the wrong. And that's obvious. But look, uh, Will Smith, we'll see what he says in the coming days. My guess is he'll come for, he'll release some sort of apology. But he did semi-apologize in his uh, reward uh, award speech. But what he said was, I apologize to the Academy. And he apologized to, you know, the room. He didn't apologize to Chris Rock. Yeah, so I was real so we'll see if that happens. about it right now. Um, but either way, obviously, it should have never gotten to this point. And I truly am astounded that a lot of people are defending Will Smith and really going that extra level to defend him 
where they're trying to like morally justify it and ethically justify it. I would just beg of those people, think of the precedent that that sets. It will be the worst imaginable precedent. Wait, wait. Hey, y'all. Oh, actually, according to um, Wikipedia right here at the bomb, the day following the incident, Smith issued an apology to Rock and the Academy via Instagram and Facebook. Ah, so yes, it's, uh, totally had You know, totally had Well, it would have been nice if Wikipedia had a link to it so I could see, let's see, Fallout maybe? Maybe I'll check it later. But yeah, 100% in Chris Rock's camp on this one. That was unacceptable yes. what Will Smith did. So what do you have to say about that? Jeez, Chris. You do that, like, heckle. Like, yeah, you can heckle him a bit, but you don't need to fucking assault him unless we're gonna, unless we're gonna have all out brawls. Hey. Brawls in, that, um, comedy clubs. Only thing I could say is that slap would have been perfect for an etchy anime for a pervert. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, but yeah, Chris Rock yeah, definitely did not yeah. deserve that. That was so bullshit. You slap down there and you slap off it and it's like, it's an argument there. And then like two guys come up and just slap a um, bikini off. And it's like, hey. And of course, watch, it'll probably be some racial divide too when a reaction comes to this as well. Okay. Alright, so now, on to the next topic. Chris Wallace torches Fox News after leaving the network. So, Chris Wallace was, I think, might have been one of the, like, one of the few remaining OGs on Fox News. He's been there for a long time. And he's yeah. leaving recently. And I say this with, like, as much grain of salt as possible, but he is up there with Shemp Smith before he left us, and maybe somewhat Megan Kelly as, like, one of the very, very, very few quasi-neutral journalists and reporters on Fox News. And that is saying a lot. That, and he's not even that really either. There's a lot of times he spews far-right crap too. Like when he did his interview with, um, um, God, his name won't come to my head. So, John Stewart, about that Fox News just spews the right-wing talking points and all that. Like, he pretty much admitted it. But he still was, was like one of the very few objective journalists journalists on there, on there sometimes. Well, he's leaving, and he's leaving because of the 2020 election in January 6. Is he can't take the bullshit anymore? Which who can blame him? So Chris Wallace recently left Fox News, and uh, I'm going to read you how he is torching the network now on the way out the door. So Chris Wallace was one example of a guy who they put out there to maintain some degree of credibility. Um, he is one of the least partisan of the people on air, even though he still is partisan. Yeah. Uh, he still is conservative. Like he and Shep Smith but, like um, the he was put out there as like a like good people to on there. And now they're both types. gone. And um, Remember that the um, bar is in the, in the dirt, so they literally just have to keep walking to go over it. Yep. Um, he always defended the network. He always thought they were doing a good job. He would always say, I remember a debate he had with Jon Stewart one time where he always said, look, we provide the counter narrative. We provide the provide the counterbalance to the biased mainstream media. They're so liberal and we're just providing the other perspective, the conservative Even though they're not liberal at all. Fair and balanced. <laughs> he seemed to really buy that propaganda and believe that notion, even though it's absurd. Fox News has always been a cesspool. Um, but now, since he's out the door and he's launching a show, I think on CNN Plus, which is CNN streaming thing, which I think launches this week and it's going to be an abysmal disaster. I'm so sad that the numbers aren't going to be released. The numbers are only internal because the actual numbers are going to be pathetic. Oh, well, I'm man. afraid they'll find a way to rig the system and somehow end up beating other streaming services. So just we'll wait and see what happens on that front. But look at what he says about Fox News. So this is in Mediaite. Chris Wallace says working at Fox News was, quote, unsustainable after 2020 election. I, quote, no longer felt comfortable with Fox News programming. Wow. Okay, so let me read you a little bit here. Wallace gave an interview to the New York Times to promote his nightly interview program, Who's Talking to Chris Wallace, which launches Tuesday reflecting uh, on his decision to leave Fox last year. Wallace explained, I just no longer felt comfortable with the programming at the network. I'm fine with opinion, conservative opinion, liberal opinion, he continued. But when people start to question the truth, who won the 2020 election or January 6th and insurrection, I found that unsustainable. I spent a lot of 2021 looking to see if there was a different place for me to do my job. Wallace described the changes he observed in Fox News following the 2020 election. He's also 
confirm he also confirmed reports from several months ago that he complained to Fox News leadership about the conspiracy theories Tucker Carlson was spreading about the storming of the US Capitol. Quote, before I found it was an environment in which I could do my job and feel good about my involvement at Fox, Wallace said about his time with Fox. And since November of 2020, that just became unsustainable, increasingly unsustainable as time went on. So look, I'm sure there are going to be a lot of, you know, democratic-minded people and liberals who look at this and they applaud it and they say, he kind of took a moral stand here, he said the January 6th stuff goes too far, I'm out, I can't do it anymore. And on the one hand, I'm inclined to agree with that to a certain extent because he says this crosses a line and I was lenient with my line, et cetera, et cetera. But on the other hand, and this is the thought that dominates my mind more, this misguided at best notion that, well, before Fox News was good. Nope. That's, to me, that is the most preposterous implication here because they've always been horrendous. When Chris Wallace was there, Remember when Sean Hannity attacked Obama for eating a burger with mustard on it? He had a segment on that. Remember when yeah. they said Trump Barack Obama. Obama did a, quote, terrorist fist jab with Michelle Obama? Yeah. They said and then that he on wore a tan suit. How many times, yeah. over and over, did they... And by the way, for all of you who don't remember, this also happened to Biden, too. Hell, back like in 2015, Fox, Fox News had a meltdown because he ate ice cream the wrong way or something like that and just recently he had they had a meltdown with how he ate pizza at with american troops in poland like what come on a lie about the nature of what was going on in dc between democrats and republicans where democrats would concede and give more and more and more to republicans and republicans would still be obstructionists during the obama era and they would go out there on fox news and pretend like it's the Democrats, who are unreasonable and not bipartisan and not willing to compromise and are extremists, when obviously it was the Republicans who were being extremist. I mean, for Christ's sake, Democrats had a supermajority and they passed a Republican health care plan. That's what Obamacare was, an individual mandate system. It's like Romney Care in Massachusetts. It's an idea that was birthed at the, Her at the Heritage Foundation, which is a right-wing think tank. You would have no idea. You would have thought it was like Che Guevara was coming over to take over our health care and nationalize the entire thing. That's how they acted on Fox News. And they would say the things about, like, you know, they're going to kill your grandma and stuff like that. This is what they were saying when Chris Wallace was there. And Chris Wallace had no objection whatsoever to any of that. Fox News is the network. Now, I don't know if Chris Wallace was there all the way back then, but Fox News was the network that wrongly called the 2000 election for George W. Bush before we knew it. And then every other network followed suit and ran with it. And that very well could have impacted the outcome because after the full recount of Florida, we found Al Gore actually won it. So they have been biased every single step of the way. They have been rigidly, ruthlessly, viciously partisan every single step of the way. And Chris Wallace was like, well, they were a great network and they were fair and balanced until the January 6th stuff. Now, does the January 6th stuff cross the line? Of course it does. Of course it does. The idea that like, you know, hey, maybe it's okay that they stormed the Capitol and there was a riot and windows were broken and there were threats and there was an attempt by a group of losers to try to overthrow the, the government. Maybe it's okay that Trump gave a speech saying, let's go to the Capitol and maybe that's our, no, 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 no. That stuff is all wrong and bad and crosses the line, but so did the other stuff. And, uh, you know, th that's the thing that annoys me the most that I feel like the moral meter of DC journalists always misfires like they never get their outrage they never calibrate their outrage properly like they're not outraged about 30 million people not having health care about 80 percent of the country living paycheck to paycheck 45 people 45,000 people dying every year because they don't have health care they're not outraged about all that they're not outraged about the endless wars they're not outraged about the arming of the Azov battalion the neo-nazis or the arming of jihadists in Syria they don't also, it's always um... like yeah, remember though, yes, the Azov Battalion is a thing. Apparently not much though anymore. Apparently they've been wiped out in Mariupol. Yep. And even better, apparently, the Azov, um, I don't know if this is how true this is. The Azov and Krakow Battalions may have wiped each other out. Which, hey, base, far-right retards kill each other. Die fascists. <laughs> Little yeah. things here and there that they say, well, that crosses a line. When there's 84 things before it that cross a line, and they were sitting there cheering it on or actively promoting the lies. And so that's what frustrates me about this thing. 
And my guess is, of course, Chris Wall is going to be fully rehabilitated. He's going to be welcomed with open arms into Democratic aligned. Just like Megan Kelly and like, Shep Smith were. The bar for them is oh, so fucking low. Amazing. All you have to do is say, January 6th was bad and I don't like Trump. And they're like, yes, welcome. We know you love torture and illegal wars and and a uh, government that keeps people in poverty, but and you're still okay with us because you cleared the lowest bar in human history. Now, to be fair, I don't know if, if Chris Wall supports torture or he probably does support illegal wars, but torture, I don't know. Uh, but point is, um, he ain't a hero. And really what he's doing is now launching a show on a streaming platform that will have roughly negative five viewers. I mean, again, this thing, CNN Plus... Ooh, it's going to crash and burn spectacularly. Now, they might find a way to rig the system and, and beef up their numbers through coercive means. That's certainly possible. That's certainly what the big networks did. On and if I'm correct, because I saw Kyle tweet this the other day, if this is the exact same thing that I saw him tweet about, apparently it was so... If this is correct, it, was, it did so poorly on its first day that they've already pretty much hit it. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Or something like that. Kyle tweeted something like that and he went out LMAO. <laughs> on YouTube with the algorithm. Um, but in a fair fight, they would get obliterated. I mean, well, it looks a, like they did. Even when they Jake rig it, they got obliterated. Show maybe. On raising kids with Anderson Cooper. Like, uh, Casey Hunt has a show. Like, she has negative charisma. Negative charisma. And never mind, it's not like she doesn't have charisma, but she makes great points. She doesn't make great points. So the whole thing is just a cesspool. It's just let's take all of our shitty programming that nobody likes on CNN and just now put it on the streaming platform that nobody will like or care about or buy, and then we won't release the numbers and we'll find a way to rig it so that people end up watching it in a roundabout way. All right. Uh, congrats. Um, congrats, Chris Wallace. I almost called him George Wallace. Congrats, Chris Wallace, for finally finding something that you had a moral objection to when there were, like, 80,000 things beforehand that you let slide or actively partook in the negative stuff. Hey, yes. y'all, do me a favor. And You're not a hero in that regard. Yeah. So, what do you guys say about this? The last possibly somewhat quasi, not really, but somewhat good journalist on Fox News it's leaving. This is a total monster. Well, good luck, Chris Wallace, in that regard. I don't know how much worse Fox News is going to get with all like their somewhat quasi, not really good journalists still left. But before we get to the final topic, I actually was looking up as we were watching Chris Wallace's Will Smith's um, apology. So I wanted to read that really quick because it's a long one. Violence in, all f violence in all of its forms is poisonous and destructive. My behavior at last night's Academy Awards was unacceptable and inexcusable. Jokes at my expense are part of the job. But a joke about... J Jada's medical condition was too much for me to bear and I reacted emotionally. I would like to publicly apologize to you, Chris. It... I was out of line. I was wrong. I am embarrassed with my actions. Me and my actions were not indicative of a man. I want to be. I me, mean, I want to be. There is no place for violence in the world of love and kindness. I would also like to apologize to the Academy, the producers of the show, all the attendees, and everyone watching around the world. I would love. I would like to apologize to the Williams family and my King Richard family. I deeply regret my behavior. Staying. I mean, I deeply regret that my behavior has stained what was been an otherwise gorgeous journey for all of us. I am a work in progress. Well, at least he did it. But no yeah. doesn't excuse him doing that. <laughs> all right, now on to the final topic. Rokana 2024, question mark? So, let's see, where was it at? I think it was Mike. Yeah, Mike that covered it. Supposedly, people that were involved in Bernie's campaign... Want Rokana to run in 2024? And maybe they're working with him, question mark? I haven't watched this shit, so let's see what this is about. So, the death of the Bernie 2020 campaign has left a huge void. I don't know who the next leader of the progressive wing of the Democratic Party is. It's Bernie. Until he dies, or he wins, it has to be Bernie every single time. Going to be. I mean, certainly Bernie Sanders is still around <laughs> fighting for... I can sift magic to resurrect to Bernie from the dead. Yep. For worker rights and for the people, but in terms of who's going to be the next leader of the movement, who's going to run for president as a progressive, I don't know. 
I genuinely don't know. I think a lot of progressives have been asking themselves this question. It's definitely not going to be Elizabeth Warren. She's burnt every single bridge with progressives in 2020 when she threw Bernie Sanders under a bus so she could advance her own campaign. And when she had an opportunity to really make a difference and prove to everyone that she was serious about enacting progressive change, she didn't. She could have dropped out and endorsed Bernie Sanders when all of the moderate Democrats dropped out and coalesced around Biden, but she didn't do that. So I don't think anyone trusts her, and for good reason. So besides her, who else has name recognition? I mean, you have AOC, but I for one think that it'd be better off if she had more experience as a legislator. You know, you can have the right policy ideas, but that doesn't necessarily translate into effective policy making. So I want her to remain in Congress a lot longer so she can actually build up the experience necessary to be AOC. more effective if she ever chooses to run for president oh, someday. Yeah. So who's going to run in 2024 if Biden isn't seeking a second term? Who's going to run in 2028? If Biden does run, though, we need to have a primary challenge him against him regardless. I think there's nobody, right? Except campaign alum from Bernie 2020 is throwing out a name, and they're pushing it pretty hard. And that individual is Ro Khanna. So this was uh, discussed in an article written by Holly Otterbein in Politico. And um, I'll tell you my thoughts on it. But first, let's get to the substance here. Top figures from Bernie Sanders' presidential campaign are privately encouraging Ro Khanna to run for president in 2024 if Joe Biden doesn't seek a second term, giving the California congressman an important stamp of approval from progressives as the party looks to its post-Biden future. Jeff Weaver, Sanders' former presidential campaign manager, and Mark Longabaugh, a senior advisor to Sanders during his 2016 bid, have both urged Khanna to consider a campaign in the event Biden declines to run again, according to a person familiar with their discussions. I think Roe would be a very effective candidate, said Longabaugh, who stressed that he was only referring to a scenario in which Biden did not run again in 2024. Quote, this guy has a message that's very powerful. Roe is basically saying, is there a way in which we can reconstruct the economy so that all of the wealth is not just being generated on the East Coast, West Coast, or out of my congressional district? In an interview, Khanna made clear that he had no intention of challenging Biden and expressed strong support for his reelection, but he did not now, close the door to 2028. I'm not running in 2024, Kana said. I fully expect the president's run and intend to support him strongly. If for some reason he doesn't, that would be very disappointing. But there are a number of other candidates who I think I could get behind who would make sure that the Democrats beat Donald Trump. Okay, so it doesn't seem like Roe is open to this, perhaps 2028, but 2024, not necessarily so. Um, how do I feel about that? That's what you're all wondering, right? And honestly, I... I'll just be honest, I'm not optimistic about anyone currently. I, I feel completely hopeless. I don't know that we're going to have the right leader emerge for quite some time on the left. I just, you got I really value Ro Khanna's opinion. I think that he is a good person. His intentions are pure. But the problem is that as we've learned, that only goes so far. Bernie Sanders is a good person. His intentions are pure, but in 2020, he just wasn't combative enough. He refused yeah, to nice. challenge the status quo as vociferously as he did in 2016. And I think that that hurt his campaign. He refused to attack Joe Biden directly when it was warranted and necessary. And I think that Ro Khanna would be largely like... He should have been like attacking them every chance he got. Yep. Like, I'm the only one who who you can trust and be like and point out that everything evil about Joe, about Joe Biden and may and basically make everyone else unvotable. Yep, like we keep saying for years, we need a progressive Trump, a progressive that will yes. destroy every single person around them and will not leave any chance of them to have any chance of recovering. Just like Trump did, oh, also, the same. Constant, also constantly interrupting them, making sure they can't get their points out, their, their pro-genocide, pro-terrorism points out. Uh, in that regard, when it comes to strategy. Now, policy, I agree with him. I, I absolutely admire that he supports Medicare for All. He is largely anti-war. I have policy disagreements when it comes to BDS. It hurts me that he doesn't support the BDS movement. Um, but I think that when it comes to policy, he would be one of, if not the most left-leaning president in American history, if he were able to get elected. But I think that he's so nice 
that the Democratic Party establishment would absolutely crush him. And he's pursuing the same strategy that Elizabeth Warren pursued, right? She really tried to literally attack or attack them and just not only destroy them, but honestly, it all I almost feel like um, you just about need um, need physical assaults on some of them as well. Who? not take a side when it comes to both warring factions of the Democratic Party. You know, she didn't want to burn bridges with moderates, but for the most of it, you know, for the most part, she tried to maintain a healthy relationship with leftists until the very end when she burned bridges. And moderates still didn't support her. She was still attacked. So I think that this strategy has been a proven failure. So if Ro Khanna were to be serious, about being the new leader of the left, he has to change strategies. I think that his strategy would be catastrophic if he were to ever run for president. I just think that you have to be combative, right? I mean, with Build Back Better, for example, he's been overly deferential to Joe Manchin, and he's tried to put his faith in Joe Manchin. He's, he's claimed that we have to respect Joe Manchin, uh, when I think that the opposite is actually true. I think you have to attack... Uh, they all just block everything that corporate Democrats put at Joe Manchin and call him out. So I feel like somebody who's really uh, going to be the next leader of the Democratic Party's progressive wing, they've got to be a wrecking ball. They've got to be someone who isn't afraid to make enemies. Someone who is going to unapologetically stand up for the people even if that means making enemies within the democratic party and calling out democratic uh, democratic party leadership again when it comes to his policies i think that he would do a lot of good with his executive order but when it comes to the process of governing i mean would he have what it takes to call out members of his own party who obstruct his agenda as they inevitably will do does he have what it takes to condemn the media when they side with corporate Democrats, you know, because their advertising dollars also happen to contribute to uh, go to, you know, uh, corporate Democrat campaigns? I just don't feel hopeful. Now, having said that, though, whenever there's another Democratic Party primary, I will support the most left leaning candidate, albeit enthusiastically so, because I just don't have hope that the media is ever going to allow a left wing candidate who's actually left leaning to be successful. I think that you 2020 taught us a lesson. Yep. It taught yeah, us that the media you, you is still there. The they they make it seem like they've been evil. Because here's the thing, Mike, which I'm sure you know, the vast majority of Americans don't trust or believe the media. So we can easily crush them. You just gotta be willing to do it. powerful and they control the narrative. And if they want to find a way to sink a candidate, they'll do that. In 2020, it was electability. The Democratic Party's base agreed with Bernie Sanders on Medicare for all. But they got voters convinced that Bernie Sanders just wasn't electable. Which is not true either. So, yeah. I just don't fact, have hope. Least and maybe I'm too... Elected. He wasn't the least electable. Cynical. But maybe Ro like, can't... Oh, that was just any of the other corporate um, Democrats. Because remember there were polls that showed Bernie did better against Trump than Biden, remember? Yeah. And yes. be the leader who wins. All of this. this is all speculation, right? But um, I'm sorry... Um, our Even electoral like, system. Um, Mayo Pete um, was ahead at some point. Has beaten me down to where I'm not very optimistic. And it's sad because Ro Khanna is someone who I think is genuinely a nice person. He's reached out multiple times to come on the show when I criticize him. Who does that? Who actually wants to listen to criticism? Most people recoil. So he genuinely wants to do good. I think his intentions are pure, but I think that the Democratic Party establishment would exploit his niceness and crush him and also subsequently crush the left as a consequence. And that's why I just feel so cynical. And I'm being honest, I hope that my cynicism doesn't rub off on people. But even if there was a candidate who I was excited about, I just don't think that I would allow myself to get as excited and feel as optimistic as I did in 2020 because we saw the reaction to Bernie Sanders. So, interesting video about maybe him running. So, we got to see about that. Yeah. So, what do you think about the possibility? I don't know. I don't know if it would work too well. 
All I can say is if Biden does run in 2024, us progressives need to have some sort of challenger against him. He cannot get the nomination just willing, just like that. He needs to earn it. That's what I've been saying for years, I'll continue saying that. All right, so we've gone through all the topics, so we're going to wrap it up here. See you guys, hopefully sometime soon, for our next episode. So see you guys next time.